Hello, welcome, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 323. Today, we're talking about tracking things, the importance of data, the importance of statistics as it relates to life, as it relates to martial arts, and we're even going to throw in some stuff if you have a martial arts business, some things that I think you might consider. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder of Whistlekick. I'm your host for this show, and I've been in business since I was 14. Man, I've barely earned a paycheck, ever. I've always paid myself. I've always worked my own way. There's something about that that just seems very martial arts to me. I was, well, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. Let, <laughs> I'll get into that in a moment. Man, I'm fired up for this one. If you want to check out the show notes, Whistlekick, martialartsradio.com. All of our stuff that we do is at whistlekick.com. And you can, what can you do? You can leave us a review, maybe over at iTunes and say, hey, I like this show. Or if you don't, say that too. Though I'm going to guess, if you're listening to this show, you probably enjoy it. Because why would you listen if you don't? That would be strange. I think we all know I love this show because I get to talk to amazing people. I get to talk to all of you about this great stuff, fun topics. And yeah, I'll be honest. I enjoy talking. You ever ever seen me at an event or something? I've probably talked your ear off. That's okay. Hopefully that's okay. Because I try to make sure that I'm, I'm a good conversationalist. It's not an easy word to say. All right, let's talk about the subject. Let's talk about data and statistics and numbers and all of those things. You know why I love them? Because they don't lie. If you track the right things, if you track them in the right way, it's objective. I love objectivity. The more objective something is, the easier it is to understand, the less arguing, the less interpretation that is needed. Now, of course, there's no such thing, as far as I'm concerned, as being truly objective the moment that we filter anything through our own thoughts or perspectives or senses. There become, they're, they're, there's an element of subjectivity. And if you can't tell, this was really the heart of my work in philosophy in college, this whole objective versus subjective notion, truth. Got really fired up about that stuff. I don't get to talk about it too much anymore, but here we go with a subject I get to work it in. I mentioned a few weeks ago that over at Marshall Journal, we had a piece from Louis Martin talking about the fights he watched on YouTube and trying to pull some statistical data out of that. And he's working on, or maybe even just released, a, a follow-up, something on another subject. And he really found that he digs that whole objective lens into martial arts. And I love that because it's something that we don't get to do too often as martial artists. Now, I would encourage that all of you find ways to do this. Now, I don't mean that you conduct some kind of big research study as he did, but especially if you're a higher rank to observe what's going on with lower ranks, maybe even on a night where you're not required to instruct sit off on the side with a, a clipboard or something what techniques do people th use in free sparring or when people go to choose a stance what percentage go left versus right and i'm not saying that that actual number is what's important it's the mindset the ability to step outside your subjective beliefs, your preconceived notions, and observe the world through an objective way. Be willing to let go of the things you think, you believe, and look at what's actually there can be pretty eye-opening. Sometimes you can't do that with statistics, with observations. Sometimes you have to test theories. We're really talking about being a bit more scientific in our martial arts practice, whether that's our own personal practice or the way that we teach things. What if you have a, for lack of a better word, let's call it a fitness challenge. What if you do certain things across a 30-day cycle 
and you're recording data of your students. What if, what if it's push-ups? What if you kind of escalate the amount of time spent on push-ups or any other particular movement at the beginning of a month, and then you do it, have some kind of testing at the beginning and end of the month and see what the impact is. You may not even tell your students that you're doing this. There's all kinds of ways that you can use data in martial arts. And the way that you get data is by tracking things. Do you track how often your students go to class? There are patterns there. If you track your enrollment over the course of several years, you're going to see cycles. You'll see that certain months out of the year, in most schools, it's the beginning of the school year. That's when people are used to making changes here in the United States. You're going to see higher enrollment. You probably see lower attendance over the summers, over holiday breaks. And if you are a school owner, you can use that data to predict your income. I see a lot of martial arts school owners on social media complaining, complaining about the way the summer goes, complaining about their personal financial position because they don't have enough income coming in. Um, I'm sorry, you knew that was going to happen. It's happened the last 10, 20, 30 years. You should be budgeting for that. If you don't want that to happen, there are ways that you can combat that. But the first thing is to track it, to know what's going to happen. I lose 30% of my students over the summer. I have, on average, 10 new students start every September. You know, whatever it is. If you work those numbers, you can start to understand what's happening with your martial arts school, with your martial arts business. As a student, there are things that you can track for yourself. You probably know that if you work on a form more, you get better at it. Routine. It helps, right? Practice. How many times do you need to practice that form before you feel competent enough at your next testing? Well, you could wait until the last minute and try and do it, you know, a thousand times in a week, or you can practice it once a day, three times a week. I don't know what that is. But if you're tracking it, you'll know, hey, over the last three months, I've done this form a hundred times. I feel pretty good about it. You can't truly understand something unless you can measure it. How much better would it be if you can measure the force, the speed of your techniques? You know that when you make adjustments, you'll know, hey, this has an impact. I would encourage, I would suggest that anything you can do to track, to gain data about your personal martial arts training or your martial arts school is worth considering. I'm not going to say it's all valuable. I'm not going to say it's all equally valuable, but it's worth considering. One of the things that has been bothering me as someone who is engaged in a business that needs to understand the martial arts landscape is the lack of good data. When I present to potential investors or when people just come and ask me, how is the martial arts industry doing? I only have anecdote for them. I don't have good data. And after several years of that, I kind of had this epiphany. Well, we have enough reach now that we might be able to get some data. We can help martial arts school owners and the martial arts industry overall by collecting data from the martial arts schools that we have access to and sharing that data with all of them. So here's what we did. We constructed something that we're calling the whistle kick report. Super simple. You fill out a really quick survey. It's anonymous. We take that data, we crunch it, we spit it back out to you at the end of the month. That's it. Take you two, three minutes, and you start to understand where does my martial arts business fit in the overall martial arts landscape. If you are tracking things, it's also helpful to know, are there outside pressures affecting what's going on with my efforts? Let's say you're a martial arts school and you typically get 
we'll use an example from before, you typically get 10 new signups every September as part of back to school. And then the next year, without realizing that you're doing anything differently, without really knowing anything, you get 20. Wow. I mean, that's, that's great news, but why am I the only one that saw an increase here? Maybe you ask some nearby schools, some friends, but maybe they don't track. Maybe all they have is anecdote for you. Well, now you're going to be able to see, oh, hey, overall, the entire martial arts industry saw more signups this quarter. I'm right in line with everything else. Or what if it goes the other way? I saw 10 signups, but the typical martial arts school saw, you know, five. That's helpful in your business. A martial arts school is a business. It has to be. Even if it's a nonprofit, it's a business. Even if it's a club, it's a business. Whether or not you're collecting money, it's still a business. So knowing what's going on is really helpful. On top of that, I'm really looking forward to being able to share this information beyond the schools to let everybody know what's going on with the industry. Because I think that that's important for us as we make decisions, not just here at Whistlekick, but for all the other martial arts related and even adjacent businesses out there. Is the martial arts industry growing? I can't honestly say it is or it isn't. I think it is, but I want proof. And that's why we're doing the Whistlekick Report. Now, if you want to participate or you want to get access to that data, head on over to whistlekick.com, go to the More tab, and you'll see the Whistlekick Report in there. Separate page. It'll drop you out to a Survey Monkey link. It is free to participate. I want to underscore it is anonymous. Even if you do, excuse me, fill out the box at the end, offering up your email address, because that's that's how we're going to send you the data. We are not posting this this data publicly. We'll we'll do some reporting on it and we'll we'll offer up some some statistics, but we're not going to send the whole thing out publicly. This the only way you're going to get this in full is if you commit, fill out the survey and then we're, we're going to email it to, but we're not going to do anything with that email address other than send you that information and, and let you know when the next survey is. We're not sending you our regular newsletter. We're not spamming you. We're not doing a darn thing. You can unsubscribe at any time. Bam. Super easy. You can read more about that over there on that page. We didn't even make a separate website for it. That's how gritty and simple this is. You fill out a survey. It'll take you a couple minutes. Seriously, just a couple minutes. It's like five to 15 questions, depending on which survey we're doing. We've got three. We're going to rotate through, get feedback. I'm stoked for this. I really am. Now, if you are not a martial arts school owner, you might be thinking, Jeremy, how does this even impact me? How does this relate to me? Well, I think everybody wants to know what's going on with the martial arts industry. Even if you don't, well, that's fine. I do. And I think most of the listeners out there do because we're passionate about the martial arts. We care. We want to know, is martial arts growing or is it shrinking? At the heart of it, that's what this data is going to be able to tell us. So head on over, whistlekick.com, hit the more tab, find the Whistlekick report. And even if you don't, you can watch. We will release some of that data publicly uh, after we get it out to all the people who fill it out. There'll, there'll, be a, there'll be some lag time there. If you have questions for me, if you have concerns, if you want to know, hey, Jeremy, why is Whistlekick rolling out all of these business services the last few weeks? Well, we're just trying to serve our community. We've got a lot out there for individual martial arts practitioners. We're trying to give some attention now to the schools, to the business side of things, because that's one of the avenues that we're trying to grow. Again, I don't really hide anything. Our business model is pretty transparent. It's just how I like to do it. So go ahead, email me if you want, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Find us on social media. We are at Whistlekick everywhere you could imagine. You can find the show notes for this as well as any other episode, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And of course, if you know other martial arts school owners, please let them know about the Whistlekick Report. The more data we get in there, the better it is for everybody. The more data points means more accurate information, better actionable information for everyone. I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your time, for your patience, for your support. It means a lot to me. Until next time, train hard, smile and have a great day.